Hey team, this is Grant David Collins, and welcome to Basement Philanthropy, a place for people who do not want to wait until they're rich or retired to create meaning, connection, and impact with their money, regardless of the amount. On this first episode of a two-part mini-series, we're going to be diving into why Like Bait Charity is suffocating our personal giving, so let's get started. So if you've been on social media recently, you have likely run into some iteration of Like Bait Charity. And what Like Bait Charity is, is content that is produced that shows some sort of charitable action and is geared around you interacting or liking that post so that it continues to go viral and, and gains, gains traction. So some examples of this that I have come across recently is you have somebody that is checking out at a grocery store checkout line, and as they're about to swipe their credit card, somebody walks into the frame that looks like they are a store worker, and they come up to the cashier part where you shove your credit card in, and they say, oh, I got to check this real quick, and so the person gets out of the way, the person inserts a card, they exit that card, and then they leave, And it turns out that this random person has actually paid for their groceries. And so this person is in shock and there's likely some type of music that is playing in the background that makes you feel all connected to it. Another example is that it is more of a got you example where I have seen it done in a lot of different areas, but somebody is standing in front of a business somewhere asking for some sort of favor. It can be monetary or something else. And it shows all these different people rejecting this person. So how dare these people, the injustice that is happening. And uh, and they reject this person. And then somebody comes out of nowhere and and gives this person some money or what they needed. And in return, they get 10 times what they originally gave. And there's usually some sort of story around why this person actually need the funds. And it's all great, supposedly. So what's wrong with this? And why am I speaking into it and getting all riled up? Which I will be in this episode because I am honestly so sick of this crap. <laughs> So why it's so bad, let's jump into some quick neurochemistry by Grant Collins, which means it's going to be very high level because I do not know a ton about neurochemistry. But what I do know is when you are involved with giving, your brain actually reinforces that action because over time, as we've evolved as a human society, giving and helping has allowed us to survive. And so our brains are really good at doing that. They want us to survive, and so they reward things that allow us as individuals and as a collective group to be able to survive and continue to grow and and develop. And so when you are involved with some sort of giving situation, you've likely experienced what psychologists call the helper's high which is endorphins being released into your brain and you feel a sense of euphoria or connection. Some people call it the warm glow that happens when you get involved with charity. And so our brains are doing this because they want to reinforce this action. So why am I putting a Jason Bourne-like disposal technique on like bait charity? Well, the reason why is because we have gotten so good as a society in hijacking our brain's reward system without actually doing the action that should be rewarded. So you're sitting on your phone scrolling through social media. You come across one of those instances that I talked about and you engage with it. You watch it and you'll likely feel some sort of connection, but you haven't done anything. And so what you'll do is you'll put out a like on that, but the challenge is is that 
that's all that happens normally. Like when is the last time that you went from one of those videos and you're like, I'm going to go out and do that. I'm going to dress up as a grocery store technician and violate all sorts of legal codes that the company has set up and go in randomly to random strangers and, and swipe my credit card. And hopefully they are having a good experience with it. Like no one's going to do that. Or are you going to stand outside a gym and like ask people for money and then have the means to be able to spend $10,000 with somebody who gives you a $5 bill or whatever that math goes out to. No, you're not going to do that. And so you are likely just going to sit there, put a like on it and go to the next thing. And so the challenge is, is that we are siloing our giving. We are stuck in inaction and we're siloing our giving to people or creators who are able to do these bigger things that are not relatable to us in any way. And so we feel like we're giving, but we're actually getting such a small, tiny taste of what actual actually means to give. And we're not actually doing anything at the end of the day. And so over time, our inaction around this content besides a simple like is creating less and less personal action and more and more extravagant philanthropy, extravagant charity, extravagant giving that is being done by a couple creators and being pushed to millions and millions of people. And so that's why it's suffocating our personal giving. We're getting these rewards and so we feel like we're involved. We don't have to do anything in our lives. And in reality, like we're just getting such a small piece of what it actually is. And so that's why it's suffocating our personal giving is we feel like we're doing it. We feel like we're, we're being great people. We're supporting causes. We're making change. When in reality, we're not really doing more than supporting somebody's exploitation of another person's grief. And that is, man, it would, be, it would be bad enough if all we were doing was just not giving more. But these people are exploiting individuals who are having a really challenging time in their life. And yeah, we relate to the stories, we relate to the giving, but the challenge is of that is that these content creators are making money hand over fist with these types of experiences. And so you think, yeah, man, paying for that person's groceries, that must have cost a hundred bucks. I can guarantee you that that content creator is making thousands of dollars off of that. And so we're hijacking these people's really personal experiences for a personal gain that just doesn't sit right for me at all. Like, I am so frustrated with what is happening in the world of how giving and philanthropy is being shown that I'm doing this podcast. Like this is one of the reasons why I'm getting involved is because the actual giving that will change and impact the world is being sidelined by extravagance and by exploitation. And it just isn't right. And we can do something about it. And so that is actually what the next part of this two-part miniseries is going to be about. What can we actually do about it? Now that we know a little bit about why it is suffocating personal giving, what can we actually do about it? So tune in next week for that. Before I close out this episode, I want to speak into what I am doing on my end to make sure that my personal content and stuff that I'm doing on this channel does not turn into what I was just speaking into. Now, I'm still in development around this. And so any feedback from you, the Basement Philanthropy community, is 100% welcome. If you ever feel like a piece of my content is drifting towards this line of like bait, philanthropy and I'm taking advantage of people like I would want to know about that faster than I could even express to you. So please help me as I'm working through my journey to make sure that I'm fulfilling on that intention. But what I'll tell you is that if you've interacted with any of my content so far, 
you have not seen somebody portrayed in the way that it is normally portrayed, meaning I'm not taking advantage of the hit that happens. I'm really pushing out how somebody like you could get involved, the the technique, the uh, theory, the actual action, the ideas, so that you can get off the couch or the bed or wherever you're consuming social media and say, yeah, I could do that. And that is my intention. Now, stories are a big part of doing that. And so I haven't actually figured out exactly how I'm going to integrate stories into the content that I'm doing. But what I will tell you is that that is at the forefront of my brain as I'm building basement philanthropy. What I am committed to is creating a community and content that allows you as an individual to see yourself as somebody that matters in this work and for you to be able to get involved with something in your sphere of influence that only you can make a difference in and to watch that difference grow as we all grow in this space. Well, team, that's it for me. Let's go out in the world and create good with the money in our pockets together. Talk soon.